Okay, I thought I'd uh, done this before, but I've had a couple folks ask me if I'm uh, actually uh, getting uh, the magnetic divergence and convergence reciprocation patterns on the ferro cell by moving the magnet rather than simply placing it on top of or underneath the ferro cell, and of course the answer is no, no movement is involved, so let me just gently place the magnet on top of the ferro cell. You see I'm not moving it or the ferro cell. As you can see, clockwise and counterclockwise ultimately is only one direction of uh, magnetic reciprocation, centrifugal and centripetally from either pole. As we mentioned in our prayer video, there is actually no polarity in a magnet. There is no north pole, there is no south pole. The thing is uh, necessitated bifurcation of uh, the antinomies of counter space, that being space. Now as you see the uh, this disc magnet, this one inch by half inch disc magnet resting on the ferrule cell, you'll notice a circular bubble forming, a little black line. And if you're actually able to see down at a depth of field like I can right now, but you really can't no matter how I position the camera, it's uh, an actual extremely deep holographic like projection it's that's actually the space that you see if I were to put it underneath the ferro cell edgewise that's actually the bubble of space space in creation remember there are no fields in space there is only space as a posterior attribute to the creation of um, creation of space from uh, the loss of inertia from divergence now let me place the magnet underneath the ferro cell, once again, no movement until I get it rested there. There we go. So, no movement. Remember what you're looking at here. You have to understand it. Why is it black in the center? Why do we have a spirograph, spirograph like pattern? We have a circular reciprocation centrifugally from one side, centripetally to the other side vice versa, infinite number of lines. What's going on is the light is showing up as uh, being scattered as it's entering in, for lack of a better analogy, channels. It's either appearing. The scattering of the light to your eye through the ferrocell is occurring from it backscattering off of the, uh, the ferrofluid solution between the, the, two, uh, the two lenses. Much of the light is obviously being uh, twisted, a la the Faraday effect, um, either centrifugally or centripetally, but a portion of that is being scattered off of the ferrofluid solution into your eye. Now you can't really see what I can see, but I want you to get a good look. I'm filming this in 720. I want you to get a good look at the holographic effect. Well, I, I'm keeping the magnet stationary underneath the ferro cell, but I want you to see the holographic. You really, you still really cannot see it unless you actually have one in your hand. The holographic extreme depth of field that we have here. I'm gonna try to give you some decent representation. I just cleaned the ferro cell off. It's so easy to smear. It looked dirty. So I'm actually keeping both the magnet and the ferro cell stationary together, but I'm merely rotating both of them together as one so you can see the depth of field. Which I know, I think I've actually not done this before on any of these videos. So even though you're seeing extreme, remember, the ferro, uh, ferro fluid solution between these two cells is about a micron thin. What you think you're seeing is extreme depth of field at one micron, I assure you, if you actually have one in your hands, you'll notice that it's far, far deeper than that. So, the best hologram in the world, as so far as depth is concerned, is one micron thin, and you can do it in live video action. The future applications for this are actually enormous some of which have been realized by its inventor. Now you'll also notice as I rotate it here, you'll see some of these red lines appear. Those are uh, rarefaction lines, because now I know I have this currently facing you at the North Pole. If I were to flip it around, you'll see 
I have it on the south pole. You notice the color shift. Without even knowing the polarity of this magnet, what pole I'm at, I know I'm at the south pole now because of that color shift. Compression on one end, rarefaction on the other. So, let's put it edge on. It's hard to keep it in place when it's on the edge like this, but I'm not moving anything here. Develops on its own. Let me remove it away. You see? Nothing. Let's see if I can hold it in place. It's not easy to do on the edge. Trying to give you some understanding of the depth of the field. Place it underneath. Now this, I'm obviously moving the magnet underneath the ferro cell. But here we go. Notice that white line right in the center. What you can't see, you can to a certain degree, but you really cannot. Is that uh, between either poles we have uh, a very deep uh, projective valley. That is, of course, the dielectric inertial plane, i.e. counter space. That is where the ether is unmanifest, and manifest, obviously, on either end. That is polarity. Remember, a magnet is both, obviously, any atom in the universe is polarized, necessitatively so, because that the center of space is counter space. And obviously, that necessitates the creation of polarization. A magnet is both polarized assemblage of atoms and or molecules, obviously depending on what the magnetic object is, and also coherent. So, as we stated before, and may, may or may not have understood it, as I explained in the prior video, polarity does not exist. There is no north pole or south pole in a magnet. Well, what does that mean? It means that the center of every magnet, including a hydrogen atom, is counter space. Talk about magnetism versus a magnet. This deep valley right here that you can't really see that well, but which I can, that is the dielectric inertial plane of this magnet. That is counter space. If I were, as I showed you before, when I place the magnet up above, you'll notice that there will be a black line bubble form underneath it as the formation. Not only are you seeing a holographic projection, not really a hologram, obviously, but you're seeing a holographic-like projection. Here you go. You see the bubble form? You see this black line around the magnet? Let's do that again. Disappears. Place it there. You'll now watch, watch for the black line, the bubble, the creation of space on the other side of this magnet. And I'll get into later. Time is a, a compounding of space upon itself. Basically, time raised to an ex exponential and uh, space raised to an exponential is time. That's a matter for another discussion. You see the bubble forming. Notice the black line forming slowly. If I keep it still, that's the only way it can form. I'm trying to tilt it here so you can see it better. Now you can see it. Let me get a little bit closer. You, you see the clockwise and counterclockwise force divergences. You can see it right there, clockwise and counterclockwise. I'll show you in another video what's going on using two uh, magnetic uh, force vectors leaving centrifugally and returning centripetally. Trying to get the correct positioning so you can see the depth of field. I'm not moving anything other than both of these together. So, now do you understand why a magnet does not have two poles? It is not polarity. It is the bifurcation of space. Necessitatively, space and creation from the loss of inertia necessitates a center point. 
The antinomy, the opposite of space, obviously is counter space, and the opposite of counter space obviously is space. Necessitatively so, counter space is at the dead center of the polarity that we have here, but it's not polarity, it is the bifurcation of space, necessitatively so, as emphasizing the subject which precedes space and the posterior to the loss of space, i.e. centripetal return. So you have inertia, space, and then the return of inertia. You have inertia and acceleration, or inertia to begin with. You have force and motion, i.e. the creation of space. Necessitatively so, polarization. Like we've said before in another video, there's no such thing as a point or a line. You cannot make a line without first with a, starting with a point. You can't make a point without uh, making a line. So you have an uh, indifferentiate principle and its attribute. There's no such thing as anything in the cosmos that does not have an attribute. Light and illumination. The good that it does good. Obviously that's a point for another discussion. So anyway, the point of this video was actually to uh, answer the question. Some of the other folks, they said, well, are you moving the magnet of the ferro cell? I said, nope. I'm plopping it down. There we go. There it is. No movement. Obviously, I can move it, but the image forms on its own, necessitatively so. This is the backscattering of light in the ferrofluid solution as it is torqued and curved in the reciprocating magnetic divergences. The polarity that we know is north and south pole and a magnet, which is, of course, just the bifurcation of space. Reciprocate center, uh, centrifugally from one side and return centripetally to the other side. Never was there a coin without two faces. All phenomena in the universe necessitatively imply polarization. That is why a magnet does not have poles. The poles are divisible only due to what you see right here in the central center. That being counter space. So, you have the bifurcation of a perfect sphere, a spatial divergence, that being counter space. Remember, two principles in the universe force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Thanks for watching, and I hope that answered some of the questions that I had about the movement of the magnet on top of the ferrocell or underneath it.